Hello, bonjour everybody. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you for those who subscribe. Today we're painting the Fashion Jagger from the Classic Soldier Company kit. It's a late war paratrooper. So <clears throat> the color I'm going to use will reflect the fact of the time frame of 1944. Other color use will be marked in the description below. Also the reference guide of website, book, or even a video from YouTube will be marked in the description below if I use any part of it in my painting process. The first thing I did is the camouflage mark from the Fashion Jäger. Uh, what I used or tried to use the color pattern of 1944 color pattern used by the German uh, at the time. I know that when you play Plastic Soldier and you take the D-Day German, there's a color pattern to follow, but it's more in relation of 1943 color pattern for the Falsham Jäger, where the color is more beige color for the background of the camo than Tan Earth, 1944, that is a bit darker. So I decided to go with the darker uh, pattern, just because we are in 1944 in Normandy with the Falsham Jäger, and the color is more European color. Also in 43, the color pattern were more like a rough, uh, big edge, like corner edge or rectangular, but really sharp edge, while it, the color pattern of 1944 is more round, more fluid pattern. So that's another reason I take the 1944 pattern. When you paint the bread bag, etc., most of the people will say you need to take the blue color or even for the belt and this uh, etc has to be black and the red bag has to be blue because that's what the Falsham Jäger use but right there on the photo top left you can see that the belt are black or light brown <coughs> uh, so there's different option because in 1944 they were to that point where the kit come from the general store of the German army and they are more likely to be uh, less appropriate or less reference to which part of the forces you are part of the Luftwaffe or the Wehrmacht or the SS. So keep in mind when you paint you have some flexibility like that for 1944 is to choose a color that would contrast with the rest of the uniform so when it's on the table you can see pretty well. When I finished to paint my guys I decided to use three color wash one for the skin, one for the light color and one for the dark color and that was pretty much complete the painting of my soldier. Now that is all paint it's time to put it together on, uh, to get ready to play the game of Flames of War and the base for full soldier, plastic soldier don't really provide them. So I made some in wood that fit the size. I paint them chocolate brown or more like ground brown, European brown. <coughs> and when it's all paint, all dry, it's glue because the soldier are on the base that will make it uneven. I use some tin set mortar from Home Depot to make my base. And it's pretty easy. It dry in about 45 minutes easy to install. Also you can use from Modeler Dark Earth from Vallejo. It's a tin base also that do about the same thing but really more expensive than something from Home Depot. It take also 35, 30 to 45 minutes to dry so pretty much the same and that complete. I use PVA glue also for the grass and uh, the dirt I use a uh, sawdust and it is you got an idea of a base complete for four of my Fashion Jäger. Here's another example of <coughs> another base where I use more bark and sawdust to do uh, the grass effect and the wood effect on the ground uh, in the field. As you can see the bark and the color pattern of my truck really relate to in reality, so 
the camouflage was really good in those years. You can see when you look at the soldier from a distance on the table, the camo and the bar really mix together and make it really complete uniform. So that completes my video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy and thank you and see you soon with a new video. Bye-bye.